Hello, my name is Roger Pressman. Over the last 30 years, I've been a software engineer, a software project manager, a professor, a consultant, and an author, always specializing in software engineering topics. Over all of those years, I've seen a lot of changes. And one of the most important is the change away from ponderous formal approaches to software engineering toward a more agile approach. That's what we'll be talking about in this video module. Everyone involved in software engineering is driven by cost, by schedule, and by time to market. Stakeholders want software yesterday. And at the same time, they want it with high quality and they want it cheap. If anything, the demand for faster delivery has become even more pronounced during the internet era. And there is little likelihood that a more relaxed attitude toward budgets or time to market will occur anytime soon. At the same time, change is a fact of life for software engineers. Requirements emerge as development work is conducted. And as a consequence, software teams must react to new functions and features proposed by stakeholders and within the team itself. The bottom line, modern software engineering is driven by the need to be agile. Work has to be executed in an agile manner. Communication must be conducted in an agile fashion and change must be accommodated in an easy way. We need an agile approach, and that's what we'll be discussing as we move forward. Agile software engineering combines a philosophy and a set of development guidelines that lead us to a process that is, at the same time, agile and yet reasonably disciplined. The philosophy encourages customer satisfaction and early incremental delivery of software. It encourages small, highly motivated project teams and the application of informal methods. It strives for a minimum set of software engineering work products and overall development simplicity. No one would argue with these things. The development guidelines stress delivery over analysis and design. Although these activities aren't really discouraged, and the active and continuous communication between developers and customers. Back in 2001, Kent Beck and 16 other noted software developers, writers, and consultants, all referred to as the Agile Alliance, signed something called the Manifesto for Agile Software Development. It stated, we are covering better ways to, we are uncovering better ways to develop software by doing it and helping others do it. Through this work, we have come to value individuals and interactions over processes and tools. Working software over comprehensive documentation. Customer collaboration over contract negotiation. And responding to change over following a plan. They state, while this, there is value in the items on the right, we value the items on the left more. Now, in thinking about the manifesto for a second, we normally consider manifestos to be associated with an emerging political movement, a movement that attacks the old guard and suggests revolutionary change, hopefully change for the better. In some ways, that's exactly what the agile development approach is all about. Although the underlying ideas that guide agile development have been with us for many years, 
it has le it's been less than two decades since these ideas have crystallized into a movement. In essence, agile methods were developed in an effort to overcome perceived and actual weaknesses in conventional software engineering. Many of the perceived weaknesses went around the erroneous belief that software engineering equals documentation. In another video module, I tried to destroy this myth. Software engineering is not about producing documentation, but yet it is perceived that way. The agilists, the people who propose agile methods, tried to develop an approach that was document light. And there's nothing inherently wrong with that approach. Agile development can provide important benefits but it's not applicable to all projects, all products, all people, and all situations. It's also not antithetical to solid software engineering practice, and it can be applied as an overriding philosophy for all software work. When we begin our discussions of the Agile approach or Agile methods, we first have to define what agility really is. I guess at the bottom line, agility is effective, rapid, adaptive response to change. The goal is to establish a process that is not overwhelmed by change, a process that embraces change and doesn't let it negatively impact either delivery dates or, very importantly, quality. Agility is effective communication among all stakeholders. If communication is poor, things fall into the cracks. As a consequence of errors and omissions and rework always results. Agility is drawing the customer onto the software team. An us and them attitude never works when software intensive systems are built. The customer should be an integral part of the overall Agile team. Agility is organizing a team so that it is in control of the work to be performed. That means that the team should own its own process and take responsibility for its own decisions. It also means that the team should have a fair degree of autonomy. Whenever we discuss agility, one of the first topics that comes up is change. In the modern economy, it's often difficult or impossible to predict how a software intensive system will evolve as time passes. Market conditions change rapidly, and users needs evolve. New competitive threats emerge, sometimes without warning. In many situations, you won't be able to define requirements fully before the project begins. You must be agile enough to respond to a fluid business environment. Fluidity implies change, and change is expensive, particularly if it's uncontrolled or poorly managed. One of the most compelling characteristics of the Agile approach is its ability to reduce the costs of change throughout the software process. This discussion leads us to a fundamental question. Does this mean that a recognition of the challenges posed by modern realities in the software world cause us to discard valuable software engineering principles, concepts, methods, and tools? Absolutely not. Like all engineering disciplines, software engineering continues to evolve. It can and should be adapted easily to meet challenge posed by the demand for agility. When software is built, 
people matter. In fact, they matter a lot. If I was asked what the most important element of solid software engineering was, I would probably answer the people who are doing the work. There's no question about that. And when we address the question of agility, it's also important to address the question of people and the discipline that they bring to the overall process. Alistair Cockburn argues that all prescriptive process models have a major failing. They forget the frailties of the people who build computer software. He argues that software engineers aren't robots. They exhibit great variation in working styles, significant differences in skill levels and creativity, significant problems with orderliness, consistency, and spontaneity. Some communicate well in written form, others do not. He argues that process models can deal with people's common weaknesses with either discipline or tolerance. And he asserts that most prescriptive process models choose discipline. He states, because consistency in action in a, is a human weakness, high discipline methodologies are fragile. Having a disciplined software process is one thing, but instantiating it within a software team and making the process model work is something else. If process models are to work, they must provide a realistic mechanism for encouraging the discipline that is necessary, or they must be characterized in a manner that shows tolerance for the people who do software engineering work. Invariably, tolerant practices are easier for software people to adopt and sustain, but they may be less productive. Like most things in life, trade-offs are something that we want to consider. Now, it's true that prescriptive models do demand an element of discipline. But in some ways, I disagree with Cockburn's suggestion that they can't be tolerant. We can have both discipline and tolerance and achieve the level of fluidity and creativity that we need to build high-quality software. 